I'm Kerry Fink, and what a pleasure it is to uh, just have the privilege and the opportunity to speak with Art Eris. Art, you are the the uh, person that has brought all of this together in this wonderful new movie that has such an important message. It is, I really call it a now word. The movie is called No Vacancy, and it is literally going to be in the theaters on Monday. So pay attention to this because uh, we had the opportunity, my wife and I had the opportunity to uh, have a pre-screener, not only for those of you that are here like we are in Central Florida, this is kind of like a hometown story, but the beautiful part about this is that it's really a story that uh, is true, I'm sure, every place in the United States, because you just have to look at the statistics. The good part about home values and things going up is that, you know, homeowners feel wealthier maybe than we have in the past. But the flip side is this causes even more challenges on the homeless side. And it doesn't even begin to scratch the surface about all the things that happen with addiction and the efforts for recovery. And so I want to have the opportunity to welcome Art Eris. How are you today, sir? Uh, I'm doing great. Great to be with you, Kerry. You know, this movie, uh, all the PR stuff talks about, you know, a jaded reporter is is demoted to a rural news bureau and her cynicism is slowly transformed when she befriends a recovering addict and she works the story about a church who is struggling to purchase a motel for a homeless shelter and that this is based on a true story and i know you're finding great reaction in the film i was telling you my own personal reaction because my wife and i were talking about it after we screened it we said we thought it was so interesting how you portrayed the citizens of that area where this story was taking place as they wanted you know hey we want to help people but you know, we're concerned about it being in our backyard. I guess you, you've probably heard that before. Yes. Well, the movie is 95% true. Um, a lot of those things are almost direct from some of those uh, rowdy city commission meetings that we had and some of the challenges. But yeah, everything in there is true. And there's basically three main characters. You've got the Orlando Sentinel reporter who is based on a true story, the lady that broke the story. And then there is the, the recovering addict, and he's based on a true person. And then the pastor, who is still a pastor practicing, and he really led in the acquisition, trying to acquire this motel. So you got in really almost like the church is a character because they're going through the struggle to try to do this. So, yeah, and basically all three of them, their lives are combined. And the streams kind of converge at the end for the big payoff at the end of the movie. You know, that's always the part that's fascinating to me is like, uh, we can write a story, but God writes a brilliant story. <laughs> and when, you, when you were, when you were talking yeah. and, and, and going through how you weave all that together, you, at first you think, well, what does this demoted reporter have to do with this poor guy who's trying to put his life back together, uh, who is at least open enough to share the fact that he realizes he's in trouble. And we were just having the conversation yesterday uh, was National Day of Prayer, and, and our congressman in our area was giving some remarks at a prayer breakfast, and he was talking about the challenge that so many families are going through with this flood of drugs and people looking for solutions and trying to basically self-medicate out of pain and getting kind of trapped in that corner. And really what you guys portray in this movie, which you said is actually what the, your church does, is, is, is you're trying to get at the heart of the matter here. You know, we really want to give hope to people, Carrie. Uh, there are so many. I literally this week went to a funeral for a good friend of mine, his son, who just died. And, you know, he'd struggled with addictions and struggled with addictions. He's a great kid, but he just, you know, it just it finally got to him. And it's just there's so many families that are affected by the, the drug addiction. Now, we, we really, you know, we don't go hard on the drug addiction. We go about the homelessness. But the truth is so much of the homelessness is tied into drug addictions and mental health issues and alcohol. And you've really got to attack the, the whole issue. And so basically, we, we wanted, you know, this, I'm so glad that you mentioned about this is a local story. But if you remember in 2007, 2008, Florida had the highest unemployment rate in the nation. But in the state of Florida, Lake County had the highest unemployment rate in the state. So literally where this movie took place, we literally were sitting on the pinnacle of the homelessness problem in America. It's unbelievable. And yet, as you tell the story, it says, you know, I, we got the impression because everybody in the story references, wow, we're in this recession. Well, even though we are here now in 2022, the message in the story is as relevant and probably more so today 
than, than it was because we're still struggling with the homeless at unprecedented levels. And it's ironic because instead of the recession, uh, we do a lot of work with uh, senior communities here and we're finding seniors are really yes. being into homelessness. Again, it's almost like the wealth effect is causing it because people are buying homes where they maybe have, have rented for 20 years. And now in their effort to cover all their costs, they have no choice but to boot the, the rent up. And now then because, because this person is on fixed income, they couldn't even hope to be able to manage it. So, so you're really tackling a story that is just so important at this time. And you did it so well. The photography is beautiful. The storytelling is Thank beautiful. You. And you have some really people, people are going to recognize the people in this movie. Talk about uh, who plays some of the major characters. Well, you know, when you cast a movie, there's a thing in Hollywood called the three star formula. You really need three bankable stars to be able to commercially be viable with a motion picture and to really get the attention of any distributors. And so we really wanted three stars. Uh, we signed T.C. Stallings in May, who was in War Room and Courageous. And then last June, we signed Dean Kane. But what was funny, we were trying to figure out the female and the casting director says, you, you've got something here, Art, that's very unusual. You have a lead for a female in her 50s or 60s. She, she said, those roles are very rare. And she said, you're going to have a big response. Well, she was a, a little bit of a prophet because we had 1,400 ladies apply for the lead role. And the top 30, Carrie, were incredible. It was a very hard decision, but we landed on Sean Young, who was in Dune and then Blade Runner. And she was a delight to work with. And all three of them, it was really interesting, Carrie, is just the synergy of the three made them stronger than each of the individual ones. So we were very pleased with the cast that we had, even beyond the three main stars. I've read some of the comments. You have a great Facebook page for, again, we're talking about the movie No Vacancy. Great Facebook page. And some of the comments that I was reading there are people saying like, you know, you know, it's a, it's a great, well-told tale when you see the quality of how people are portraying the film. In other words, they're not like actors portraying the film, but they draw you into it and, and make you feel what's happening in those moments. And, and that movie particularly, and I hope I'm not giving away a plot thing, but, but just how uh, the lady reporter is interacting with her own brother is, is pretty, pretty profound. And I think a lot of families are just going to recognize yes, that situation yes. right off the bat. Yeah, yes. Well, we, we screened the theater when we, we finished and, and I, for months, I'd only been looking at the movie on my little small screen. I'd not seen it on the big screen. So we, we, we screened it for distributors in Nashville and influencers. It was a packed theater. It was really good. And so I just had no idea how people would react. I didn't know if I needed to slink out and go hide in my car, but the response was overwhelming. Uh, literally every distributor there wanted it. The people there, I mean, this lady was a pretty well-known writer. She just raved about it. So we've had a really good response. And the other thing, Carrie, the movie reviews we've had have just been over the top. I just got one this morning where uh, I was listening to Plugged In, which is a ministry of focus on the family. And the guy said, don't go see Dr. Strange too. Go see No Vacancy. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, that was a question I wanted to ask you because because the movie is fascinating. But how did you decide? I, there's a million things you probably could have titled, but how did you get to the title No Vacancy? What did, what does that mean? Well, well, part of it you have to kind of see the end of the movie. We have a picture at the end of the movie that explains about it about the about the the motel. But you know, it really is it's interesting. Is I've already I've, I've swum in both the secular river and the in the Christian river because I'm you know we have Kingstone Comics, which is a Christian publishing company, and so we we already sell our comics and graphic novels in a lot of different places. So when we started making the movie and now we're working with animation, it was just kind of a natural thing because I've always, even though I'm a pastor, I just relate well with, with secular people. And we have so many people. Uh, I mean, some of these guys that write draw for us in our comics, I mean, they've worked. When we did the Kingstone Bible, we hired about 40, 44 artists who all worked with Marvel and DC. Wow. And some of these guys came back and said, we have never been treated so well as we have with Kingstone Comics. We had the same thing happen with the movie. Sean Young, she was just loved working with us. So we've we've had a lot of good comments. And I think a lot of that crew and cast, if I were to go back with them on another movie, I think they say, I'm in. Oh, that, well, that, well, that's that's it. Because I'm, for me, myself, personally, a big, big believer in marketplace ministry. Because yes, I uh, too. we can't, you know, our pastor has a saying, he says, how do we get people in the pulpit? We have to get them 
uh, out of the pews. And then he says, how do we get people into the pews? We got to go out in the street and meet them, which is exactly what Jesus is about. You know, yeah. he, he was the one that would stop whatever they were doing and talk to the person that was right there because that's what the ministry was all about. And I think that's what's beautiful about how you tell that in the no oh, vacancy you. story. Thank you. So uh, make sure that you check it out. Uh, the best place to find it, there's links to uh, how you get to tickets. I know in our area, it's showing in at least three theaters Monday. So it's a great date night, a uh, great family. I think, it's, I think it's good if you have teenagers, if you have people that uh, may be exposed into that kind of world. It, it sure looks, looks bright at the start with the, with the drugs and things like that, but it sure turns bad real quick. And, and uh, self-medicating isn't the answer. Jesus, at least for me, <laughs> is what I advocate for is the right answer. And I know, and I know you do too. And thank you. Uh, it's not easy to put together what you do and the work and the time that goes into it. Uh, so we just, I just want to appreciate you Art heiress, who as the writer, producer, the person that, and I even liked that. I said, what else did you do on the movie? He said, well, occasionally I'm the janitor and that's it. A servant's heart. <laughs> God bless you. And thank you for, thank you for all you're doing. So uh, we're going to see you at the movies next week. Look for it. No vacancy. Find it on Facebook, like it, share it with your friends. And thank you, Art, for sharing some of your time this morning with us. I'm glad to, Carrie. Thank you. From Kingstone Studios, an incredible true story comes to the big screen May 9th. You have tenants leave today, or I'm going to terminate your lease. A demoted journalist, a recovering addict, and a pastor fighting for the homeless find themselves at the end of hope. I'm Cecil. Welcome to Hope. No Vacancy, in theaters May 9th, starring T.C. Stallings, Sean Young, and Dean King.